Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Janice. Good morning, Dr. Abbas. How are you? Everyone Good is Friday. Everyone's cracking up. Yes. Happy Friday. TGIF. Good morning, Ayo. How are you this morning? I am very well, thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Just to mention, today mm -hmm. is Friday. Yesterday was Thursday. Yes. I don't know if you'll understand, but... I would uh, love to understand, <laughs> but I, I told you that this is no violence show. So how is that? <laughs> Good morning, Rafai. How are you this morning? Where's the violence in all of this? Don't worry. We'll discuss it after the show. <laughs> Somebody won a lottery yesterday. <laughs> oh, really? I'm asking you. No, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is... This What's is going on? Too, much, don't escape. too much secrecy. Don't run away from implications. Implication. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> uh, Rufai already has sent in his implications. Yes, well done yes, from well Abidjan. Well good job, Rufai. We try, we try. Well, all right. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending. There have been mixed reactions trailing the proposed legislation by the Speaker of the House of Assembly, Muda Shiru Obasa, which will make laws in the areas of property and the economy to protect indigents of the state. On Tuesday, Obasa was unanimously re-elected as Speaker of the House after the proclamation of the state's 10th Assembly by the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, making the third consecutive time that Obasa will occupy the position. In his acceptance speech, the Speaker said, Lagos is Yoruba land and that laws passed by the Assembly will now be translated to Yoruba language. He also stated that the Assembly will ensure that laws are made to protect the interests of indigenous people of Lagos, and that lawmakers will reverse all that is reversible to protect the interests of the indigents. Lagos is a Yoruba land, as against assertion of some people that it is no more land. Therefore, part of our legislative agenda is to ensure that the translation of laws passed by this house to Yoruba language. We also aim at achieving our collective goals of creating a robust legal sorry, legislative framework that protects the interests of our people. Going forward in this way, we are going to employ all legislative instruments to support, to, for the support of the indigenous of Lagos State. Well, the pronouncement has generated mixed reactions after the rhetoric, Lagos is no man's land, heightened tensions during the just concluded elections with reports of intimidation and harassment of voters rife across the state. The Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos State during the elections, Baribo Rose Vivo, in a circular posted on Twitter, described the proposal as an attempt to jeopardize economic development and individual empowerment of the state. His statement reads in part, as a politician deeply committed to upholding the principles of fairness, equity, and justice, I strongly condemn the comments of the Speaker of the Lagos House of Assembly for considering a bill that seeks to reverse property rights in favor of indigents at the expense of the constitutional recognition of citizenship. This move not only undermines the fundamental rights of individuals, but also poses a significant threat to the principles of inclusivity and social cohesion that our great nation, Nigeria, stands for. He further stated that by considering this regressive bill, the speaker disregards the spirit of the Nigerian constitution and perpetrates a discriminatory system that divides our society along ethnic lines. Regrettable. This move threatens to erode our progress in promoting unity, national integration, and equal opportunities for all Nigerians. Furthermore, it is crucial to recognize that property rights are vital to economic development and individual empowerment. The proposed bill undermines the principle of private ownership and could severely affect investment, economic growth, and overall prosperity in Lagos State. He further stated that by considering such legislation, the speaker is sending a damaging message to local and international investors, discouraging their participation and confidence in the state's economy. It was a robust statement he posted on Twitter, um, Dr. Abati. I know, you know, I, I, I saw that you were shocked when you heard the speaker actually well, make that comment. So, yeah. Yeah, Rufa, it's not AI. We have a lot of comments, but I want to take your comment first before I continue, because this has generated a lot of reactions on social media. 
it is, they have said, against our Nigerian constitution. I don't know how this law will pass anyway. Well, if, if, first, if they Madam Odo Tsvaiwa is right on yes. all the points in that his uh, statement. I read it. We still went on further yes. and said, well, even while you are recognizing the rights of uh, indigents, the thing is for government to stop stealing people's property, to stop becoming a threat to property rights, and that, you know, this is very regressive. And I think that uh, many Nigerians agree on this call. Now, what is the function of the legislature? Let's zero in on the uh, House of Assembly. Section 4, sub 7 of the 1999 Constitution says that the uh, legislature, at the level of the House of Assembly, the same principle with regard to the National Assembly, shall make laws for peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria. The statement made by uh, uh, Speaker Mudashu Obasa, I don't see how that promotes peace. I don't see how it promotes order. I don't see how it promotes good governance. And this is the whole point of uh, Badebo Roosevelt's uh, you know, statement that you know, the House of Assembly of Lagos cannot be saying that too. It's provocative. Because you recall, as your narrative pointed out, that during the uh, just concluded elections, Ethnicity was such a big problem in Lagos State, yeah. resulting in conflict in parts of Lagos between indigenous and other persons of other ethnic uh, extraction, to an extent that indigenous were even uh, carrying rituals all over the place and threatening non indigenous to leave Lagos. Now, you can't have that. Political in, you, you can't have that, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a society. Now, going further, why did the uh, Mudashiro of Asa consider it necessary to reopen that matter? This is the point. He had been Why? chosen by his colleagues for a third term as speaker. You know, he should just thank them and talk like, uh, you know, somebody is interested in the, in the national interest, in public interest. Not to talk for, as a provincial person, dredging up uh, anti-Diluvian sentiments. Uh, Lagos uh, belongs to Yorubas. Lagos is a no man's land. I thought that argument was uh, part of the politics. You should not use the platform of the House of Assembly to play politics. That's not leadership. And this is what we say to public officials all the time. If you don't have something to say, something that will uh, appeal, appeal to reasonable, right-thinking members of society, can you just shut up? Because vulnerability is not an asset in interacting with the public. And then the issues that he raised. Those issues can, in fact, cause problems in Lagos State. I hope nobody goes ahead with that. Because the Constitution of Nigeria grants every Nigerian the right to own property. Absolutely. Section 43. Movable and immovable. In any part of Nigeria. The law is very specific. Section 44 says you can only affect those rights only as prescribed in this law. So you can't on your own just sit in the House of Assembly and say, we are removing your property rights. Section 42 says you cannot be discriminated against in this country on the basis of your ethnicity, religion, or anything. The law of France are discrimination. The threat to reverse whatever is irreversible because you are not a Yoruba person or you are not from Lagos, uh, that is uh, discriminatory. Land Use Act. Which verse, section one of which verse ownership of land in the governor as a trustee did not say if the governor of Lagos State is going to uh, give out land, he should do so only to people of, uh, of Lagos State or to only Yorubas. That uh, section one is very clear. It says, on Nigerians in any part of Nigeria. So I'm surprised because I understand that Mr. Obasa, you know, is a lawyer. So maybe he's just playing to the gallery, but this kind of thing can cause conflict, can cause disorder. Absolutely. And all those provisions that we have read out, they are enforceable in law. Yeah. So why does he want to start his uh, third term on a controversial note and on uh, something that shows uh, on due partisanship? Yes. That House of Assembly in Lagos State is for everybody in Lagos State. <laughs> it's not for people, where is that place you come from? You are from, uh, from Central Lagos, Lagos, right? Lagos Island. Lagos Island. Olo Olo yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not only for people from uh, Olo alone or people from uh, Iga. Yes. Iga, you don't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's for all of us. Absolutely. From Central Lagos to Abuleba and beyond. In fact, up to Alakuko. 
Absolutely. Dr. Matthias, you have <laughs> quoted the Constitution. I was cracking up before I come to you. You're not the only one. People are even quoting the Constitution on Twitter. Let me take a tweet from uh, Eric, who wrote, While the Lagos State House of Assembly, led by Obasa, has the power to make laws, such laws must be in line with the Constitution. The law will be declared unconstitutional before a court of competent jurisdiction as it violates relevant provisions of the Nigerian Constitution. Well, Sadiq wrote, they want to make tribal bigotry a law in Lagos. It will be against the Constitution and is another ploy to build a very tall fence between Yorubas and the people of any other tribe instead of the Nigerian government to always preach and promote unity with inter-tribal marriages and more. They divide us more. I, I mean, this is what we are seeing here. I mean, even, I, I believe I even heard you earlier this morning, even praising um, the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, you know, with all of his speeches of unity and all of that. And we get to see this at this time of our thank polity, I mean, very unfortunate, really. Yes. Your comment. Well, thank you, Dr. Bati, for ending on the note of where I'm from. Because I'm <laughs> proudly from Lagos State, yes. from Lagos you Island. You are the true Lagosian. <laughs> you're not like some people. I'm not You mean you are an indigenous. You are an indigenous. Indigen. 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 Tell them. But some then people let's are begin not. to define an indigenous. <clears throat> because when we look at Lagos State, hmm. it's such a cosmopolitan city. And we've had people who've settled. In fact, some people would still challenge my indigenous, you know, my, my being an indigenous, saying that if you trace back to centuries ago, we came from Sierra Leone and then we settled. So at the end of the day, I, I, I understand when people are a bit, you know, they take offense with Lagos's no man's land. But then, the, aside from the legal aspect which Dr. Bati has just dealt you know, excellently with, as always, is the fact that how do you begin to define who is an indigent? How do you begin to, is it for how many years? How do you begin to separate people? Maybe, I mean, my mom is from Edo State. Mm -hmm. So would you say that I'm half an indigent, so I don't have as much access? Then is it just for Lagosians or for people from the southwest, western part of Nigeria? Because if you look in the house, you would see that it's spread across different people who've come into Lagos to settle. And then very importantly, like people have said, is the fact that we are on the path to healing and restoration. What we saw or witnessed in Lagos during the March elections is what we should never see again, is what politicians should never play to again. What we should be looking at is how to bring people together. One of the things about Lagos State as a center of excellence is the fact that people from around the world can come here and thrive and excel, and they contribute to the prosperity of Lagos State. Yes, Lagos is a no man's land, but the excellence and who built Lagos is not just indigents. The people who've come around from around different parts of Nigeria have come in and they've invested in Lagos State to make it what it is. We yes. must be truthful about that. All right. Uh, Rufa, I know you've made some comments on this just really quickly so we can move on. I want to tell a story. Okay. And with this story, I'd like to pay tribute to Chief Shubomi Balogun. That is, I think he's been buried around this weekend. In the thick of the Civil War, a certain young Igbo architect who happens to be the first PhD holder in architecture in Nigeria, had a home close to Shubomi Balogun's home. And when the war started, the Igbos had to go back. And Shubomi Balogun saw that squatters were coming into the home of this young this architect. And he chased away the squatters and he renovated the home. And he put somebody in there and he was collecting rent from her and keeping it for the person. He could have taken over the property because as at that point in time there was a war and the Igbos were being denigrated. Mm. But he kept the home. After the war, this architect, PhD order in architecture, came back and he met Shubomi Balogo and he said, oh, that's your house. I kept the house for you. And while he was going, he said, please, wait. Then he went in and brought words of money out I said, this was the rent I got. And he said, thank you. That architect later became the vice president of this country, Chief Alex Ekweme. Mm. And that good turn deserves another. When it was time for Chief Shubimi Balogun to also get his own banking license, that same man was instrumental in getting his banking license. That's the kind of story Lagos is. All of this happened in Lagos. Yeah. This is the Lagos I know. Yeah. 
the Lagos of Chief Shubomi Balogu and Alex Ekweme, that where they came from did not matter, but the love and the unity that binds us together. That is the point. Today, both men are dead, but their story is the true example of Lagos. This Mudashiro Obasa's Lagos that he's talking about here, I don't know it. Well, all right. Well, thank you all for that contribution. Uh, well, in another development, a witness for the Labour Party on Thursday accused the Independent National Electoral Commission of an attempt to sabotage the 2023 presidential election. The witness, Anthony Chingu, who is a software engineer, said that he conducted investigations around the uploading of results to the IREV portal by the electoral umpire and discovered that there was a deliberate plot to undermine the electoral process. Well, this is as the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room has called on the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, to apologize for the conduct of the 2023 general election. Speaking during the presentation of the final report on the elections, the convener of the group, Ene Obi, maintained that the election was marred by irregularities, especially as it concerns the technological input. Finet works. The staff, everybody was committed. But the result, what we said, we saw, is what we have declared. We are quite disappointed with what came out because we think we had the capacity to have done better. And we are still asking the INEC chairman to apologize to Nigerians because of the electoral issues. Well, the National Commissioner and Chairman of the Information and Voter Education Committee of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Festa Sokoye, maintained that the elections were credible. I believe that we cannot, under any circumstance whatsoever, and not under any guise, reduce the entire election only to resolve management or, or resolve upload. So if there was no problem with the senatorial election, and there was no problem with the election to the House of Representatives. There was no problem with the governorship election. There was no problem with the state assembly elections. You, you cannot then write off the entire election as a sham. Well, this is as the presidential election tribunal continues. I mean, there's a lot of uh, stories that we'll hear from this um, uh, petition. But more importantly, we did ask everyone, including the PDP, asked for it to be televised. But it was quite interesting to see that witness from the Labour Party talk about the fact that he did realize or discovered that there was some sort of compromise, which is what everyone was talking about. A real quick point from you before we take our yes, final uh, well, story. It's in court, like you rightly yeah. said, the courts will decide and a number of CSOs have, brought, have presented their reports. Um, Ms. Obi, speaking on behalf of um, her CSO, is not the only one who has come out with a a, um, I don't want to use the word damning I mean report against INEC in the way they conducted the elections. They are in court trying to defend it, to say that indeed they followed due process. You saw um, Mr. Festus Okoye also defend INEC. Yeah. But Nigerians have also had something to say about this. And a number of Nigerians have talked about their own experience during this process. The Electoral Act was supposed to be a game changer. Yes. It was supposed to change the trajectory of the way that we do elections or run elections in Nigeria. Unfortunately, the implementation of it was disappointing for a number of Nigerians. Absolutely. Dr. Abati, really quickly. Well, I mean, no, the matter is in court. The issue about what was posted on the portal is uh, part of the substance of the matter. So it's for the tribunal uh, to look into the various uh, facts presented before it. And in any case, all the parties involved are calling witnesses. Yes, so that's what's going to happen. We can't yeah. inter intervene in that process. But the other thing about NLB, you recall that when NLB said, uh, you know, uh, Professor Yakubu Mahmoud should apologize, and uh, she went on at that same event mm -hmm. where the final report of the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room was presented, mm -hmm. it was reported. And one of the members of the CSO stood up and said, no, NLB should not use our own personal opinions to represent the group opinion. And that she should separate the interest of the group from our own partisan interest. So that's why you know, people should be careful. But the truth is, of course, people have different views, depending on your affiliation, depending on your experience during the uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, elections. Uh, but just to make the point that somebody gave a dissenting opinion and said, no, you are imposing your personal opinion 
on the group. Yeah, that's during so the we session. should be careful who we quote, Absolutely. because there are many views to this matter. You know that INEC has maintained that the election was credible and they have refused to apologize for any discrepancies. Well, we'll take our final story. The meeting President Bola Ahmed Tinubu held with some chieftains of the People's Democratic Party, otherwise known as the G5 governors, has been causing a stir on social media. The governors, including Sheyi Makinde, governor of Oyo State, Yesom Wike, former governor of River State, and Samuel Autumn, the immediate past governor of Benue State, as well as Okezie Ikbazu and Ifanyi Uguanyi, the former governors of Abia and Enugu State, respectively, all met Tinubu at the presidential villa on Thursday. While details of the meeting are still unknown, many are speculating that it may be connected to Tinubu's consultations regarding the formation of his cabinet. Well, as videos and pictures began circulating online, the River State Governor, Yeson Wike's picture stood out as he appeared to have suffered a wardrobe malfunction. Um, well, let's take a look at that picture, if we can pull that up. I mean, he appears to have missed a button on his suit right there. Well, let me take a reaction from uh, Ugo Chuku who wrote, few days out of office, He's looking confused to the extent that he couldn't button his suit well. Now, Wiki has seen that it's not easy chasing appointments after enjoying the luxury of being a governor for eight years. If Mr. Tinubu disappoints him, his 40-year-old whiskey wouldn't save him. Well, another Twitter user there goes, Wiki decided to make headlines by not buttoning his suit properly as he led the G5 governors to Aso Villa. Since he no longer has the opportunity to dance and sing, he used this to make banner headlines. Check the second picture to where he buttoned the suit. Well, on Twitter trend, he is the second. Well, another Twitter user there goes, who are his handlers? Why didn't the photographer call his attention? Who released this picture? Didn't the person see it? Or are they trying to pass a message? I mean, I don't know, <laughs> you know, Rufai, did you see that? Can we pull up that picture again? I mean, when I saw the video, um, we can look, you know, properly dressed. I mean, I don't know what happened here with this uh, please, picture. Please, please, what please, is it? please, please. <laughs> All of you should leave Governor Wiki look. Okay. It is style. Oh, this is style? Yes. I have seen a couple of suits like this yendeba, before, yendeba, actually. Yendeba, <laughs> yendeba, yendeba. If he didn't do, he didn't do. It is style, please. Uh, it could have been a, a slight mistake, you know, he didn't wear yeah. his suit properly and yeah. all of that. But really, I think apart from the wardrobe malfunction, what it just shows is that politicians always go where their interests are lie. Mm. So I'm not surprised that the G5 governors are going to meet Bola Metinubu. Even those that supported Tinubu and those that didn't support Tinubu will go and meet him. And that's the perks of power. And that's why every leader should be careful about the people flocking around him when he gets the power. Mm. So this is a case of political interest, but we'll see, you know, when the appointments will come out. Maybe some will be given what they call water, water, or wawulens. <laughs> but uh, we know there are some people they must make the appointment. If they don't make it, ah, yendeba, 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 yendeba. Talked about it one minute. No, I don't think uh, we should make any uh, big deal out of uh, uh, former Governor Wiki's wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. These things happen. It does. It, this suit is his own now. He bought it. I suppose so. Uh -huh. So, you know, <laughs> in, uh, you, you see that when he was going in, he looked, the, yeah. there was no more room malfunction. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just stood up to come and take the picture and he missed the uh, button. In fact, I've seen a similar picture showing Prince Charles as he then was. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, King uh, Charles uh, uh, the Third of uh, England. You know, exactly the same thing, which means that these things happen. But people have forgotten that Wiki is no longer uh, governor. It's now a private citizen. So, they, so there are no special they, assistants they came, to help with the well, wardrobe it, and it, all of that. That's, what, it, that. I mean, that's what you mean. Well, right? he's yeah. no longer governor. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. And these things can happen. Even you yourself, you had my, my wardrobe malfunction. Uh, when? When, when? this when? seat. When? When? when your zip will suddenly... I don't... <laughs> <laughs> and I will. <laughs> no, oh, you want me to tell the full story? Go ahead. Uh, so, no, no, no. I think our, our, our viewers will 
yeah. 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 When I offer to help you, you you change me away and say don't don't try why, it. Why, why were you looking at the back? No, wait, the morning. No, you know, sometimes sometimes she puts. I don't know what you're talking about. You just made up that story. I want to remember that. Ayo, Ayo, do you? You have to be my witness. I am. I I can't. I align with you. I oh I didn't want to plead the face. I align with you, but I've not seen any zips undone. I don't know the doctor about things. No, but there's nothing wrong with that. Would you just align with us? It's just about the picture being released. Wait, that way. That's what. That was the issue. Oh yeah. So in terms of yeah. Go ahead. Would you just align with Ojo? Will you take some from this side and some from that side? No, no, no. Just ah no, no. You don't get it. She has been on this table with me for about six years. Six years. About yeah. You can imagine the many things that. I did touch him, but he's trending. I did like you had my He was number two on the trend. Well, all right. Thank you all for your great analysis as always on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you all next week.